the scriptures that was read in Revelation chapter 22 is a beautiful outline of what heaven is going to be like. Let me ask you a question on this side. Is heaven real? How do you know? What was that? Yes. Let me ask you a question on this side. Is heaven real? How do you know? Yes. God in his love and his mercy sent Christ to this world that you and I might be with him where he is. You know, it is said that the last days of this earth's history, the last days of this earth's history, we are to make the book of Revelation a special study. Why? Because it depicts the scenes that we are to meet. We need to understand what we are to meet and how we are to meet it. We must know what affects, what efforts we are to make. So in that this perilous time, ladies and gentlemen, when you look around, the devil will try and keep you and I from reaching our destination. And that Let me see. I may have to preach down here on the floor. Is that all right with you? It's still not changed. Still not changed. Oh, okay. We're waiting. We're waiting on him to. God is good, amen? amen? You know, the devil will do anything and everything to try and stop this work of us reaching our goal. And that goal is to get to our destination. You know, as we traveled this morning, coming here, we got lost. We were riding around in some beautiful neighborhoods. And we were enjoying the scenery as we rode up. And we talked about how beautiful it was here in Rockford. And so, as we look at this, As we look at this, you know, in the Bible it says in Isaiah 11, verse 6. Isaiah 11, verse 6. It says, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and a little kid shall lead them. That's going to be a beautiful picture. In Galesburg, in my neighborhood, a pit bull dog had a child by the throat, and they couldn't get that dog off of that child. And that child passed away. But when Jesus comes, that is the good news. What do you say? When Christ comes again, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to bust through them clouds. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Where? In the clouds. Evermore to be with Christ. What do you say? So when we look at this picture, it says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the who? With a kid. That's going to really be something. To be able to walk with those animals. And not be afraid. You know, Isaiah 33, verse 14 says, in Isaiah 33, verse 14,
This is a beautiful picture of what heaven is going to be like. It's going to be a place that no one, no one will be in pain anymore. I would say amen to that. What do you say? So when we look at this picture, this, we're still stuck there. God is good in his love and his mercy, endure forever. And what does it say there? It says that who? Are we reading? What was that? You know, this world today, the diseases are what? On an all-time high. Monkey pops. COVID-19. We look around and we see in this world nothing but trouble. And the Bible says, who says? For God so loved the world that he did what? Gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have, what's that word? Everlasting life. We used to live in Ballinbrook. Saturday morning we would go to church in Ballinbrook. Sunday morning we would listen to those evangelists. All robbers and all the men. And I told my wife, I said, you know, them brothers can preach up a storm. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4 says, what? To come out of where? Babylon. God's people are everywhere. But there was a minister Sunday morning who said, God told him if he didn't get a million, what was it, $11 million, he was going to kill him. And he was on national television. And I sit there and listen at that. And I was shocked. And I said to myself, if that's true, verse 16 of John chapter 3, you got to throw it in the garbage. And not only that, you got to dis enlarge the whole Bible, throw it away. God in his love and his mercy he expects us to continue this race, this race toward the kingdom. Men and women everywhere are seeking the truth. You know, if you, if you look at me today, if you had seen me 40 years ago, you would have said, ain't no hope for him. No hope for that rascal. I was on drugs, partying, doing some of everything, and Jesus says, I need him to do what? Tell somebody that Jesus is real. This is the story, ladies and gentlemen. Isaiah 65 verse 25 says, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. Today, we see these animals, and they are out of control, and the world is out of control. Why? Because of S-I-N. Adam left a curse on this earth once he sinned, but thank God, Jesus sent his son that you and I might live eternally. Can I sit here? Amen. You know, it is said that when we look in the Bible, Ezekiel 34, verse 25, 
Ezekiel 34, verse 25 says, They shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep where? In the woods. One of the church members in Galesburg told me, he said, well, listen, we're going out west and sleep out with the bears. I said, not me. You go by yourself. Bears eat people. But when Jesus comes, all of this is going to be changed. You know, in Isaiah 33, verse 24, Isaiah 33, verse 24, it says, The inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. When Christ comes, when Jesus comes, everything. I notice these slides are moving on me and I'm not even changing them. God is good, amen? Heaven and earth is going to be a beautiful place. It says in Isaiah 33, verse 17, that I shall see the king in his beauty. Young people, young people. I used to be a DJ in the Navy. Played that wild music. 12 o'clock midnight to 2 in the morning. I had the turntables and everything was bouncing. There were three young men. Talking to the young people now. Daniel chapter 2. Three young men. And the king decided he was going to change the image to all gold. And he said to three teenagers, because they said, oh, king, there are some young men out there, and they're not dancing to the rap music. And he said, bring them out. And when they did, he said, listen up, young men. When that rap music play, I want you to bow down. And they said, we're not going to do it. Peer pressure. Peer pressure. The enemy is going to come at you and try to get you to join that nonsense. And those three young men said, We are careful, O Lord, O King. Our God is able to deliver us. Do you have the faith? To believe what God has said. That's the question right there. Do you have the faith to believe that? And God delivered three teenagers. We look in the world today. The teenagers are walking around. I don't have to say the rest. We already can see it. And Jesus is looking for men and women. Boys and girls. To go out. And do what? Matthew chapter 24 verse 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations for a witness. Then what's going to happen? The end shall come. That is the good news. Verse 12 of Matthew chapter 24 says, Because iniquity shall abound the love of many. Going to wax cold. And we see that today. People, and soon, soon, you and I will not be able to preach this message according to verse 11 of Revelation 13. We will not be able to preach this message. That lamb-like beast. Did you hear what I said? The lamb-like beast. For every truth God has, Satan has a counterfeit. John in verse 29 of John chapter 1, John the Baptist says, Behold, the who? Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. For every truth God has, Satan has got a counterfeit. The devil says, if God has got a lamb, I got to have one. And so we see him practicing. His moves that you and I 
will not be able to make it into heaven. Heaven is a beautiful place, according to Revelation 22. Heaven is a beautiful place, according to Revelation 21. I'm going to go back. Let's go back to these scriptures, and let's look at them quickly. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 3, it says there, and there shall be no more what? Curse. Oh, that's going to be beautiful. That mama, dad, no more drive-by shootings. No more robberies. No more wars. I was in Vietnam twice. No more hatred. All of these things that's coming today is affecting everyone. You know, the devil, he's going to try to put brother against brother in the church in the last days to keep us from getting home. And the key, Revelation chapter 22, Verse 7 says, Behold, I come what? Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. You and I are in a battle to reach our destination. In the new earth, there will be no more wheel walkers in the new earth. There will be, is there a doctor in the house? Isaiah 35 verse 10 says, sorrow and sigh shall flee away. Wars and rumors of wars. People are in a serious condition today. I thought I would have my slides up, but I tell you, it's been beautiful fellowshipping with you. You know, when you look at this, when you look at these scenes that will take place, the thing that It's going to affect all of us one day. It will affect us mental, physical, and spiritually. I met an atheist, and he told me he didn't believe in Jesus. And I told him, I said, let me tell you about my Jesus. I said, when I worked at Caterpillar, they fired me. And they lied and denied me unemployment. My wife is a nurse. She went outside to get the mail. And she slips and falls as she steps out the door and breaks her ankle in three places. Her foot is facing that way. There's a knock at the door, and a neighbor said, your wife is out here on the ground. Now, I'm sharing this with this atheist. Now, we don't have any money coming. And I told him, I said, did you hear what I said? Let me tell you about my Jesus. I say in Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10 says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I would not 
Do what? Do what? And I told this atheist, I said, for a whole year, I wasn't working and my wife was not working. We never lost our home. We had food on the table. And the lights, the heat was still on. I said, you will never know God until you put him to the test to see if he's real or not. And that atheist looked at me and he smiled. And he said, you know what, Willie? I hope I see you again. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, is going to come. And when he does, the Bible says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be what? Caught up to meet the Lord in a cloud. Those dead saints going to come up like popcorn on a hot stove. Can you say amen? It's good to fellowship with you today. My PowerPoints didn't work, but that's all right. The Holy Spirit is in the house, and that's what we need. And when we look at him, Jesus said in John, my sheep know me, and they hear my voice, and they follow me. He says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must go and call them also. True statement. 1975, I was riding down the street in Chicago going to buy a lottery ticket. Say, I'm going to hit the big one. Make me a lot of money. And I heard a voice as I was driving in my car. And this is what the voice said to me, you dummy. And I looked up and I said, you're right. And I turned around and went back home and didn't buy another lottery ticket. The numbers to the lottery is John 3.16, what do you say? Those are the numbers we need. Ladies and gentlemen, Isaiah 65, verse 17 says, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. When Jesus comes, we will fellowship in heaven. What do you say? Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, Lord, again, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. We pray that you would keep us on the straight and narrow. And when it's all said and done, we will look up and say, this is our God in whom we have waited for. Amen. We stand for our closing song, hymn number 206. Face to face. And may that be the desire of each and every one of us that one day we will see him face to face. Number 206. my Savior, face to face, what will it be when with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ who died for me, face to face I shall behold him far beyond the story. 
in his pride. 